Okay, thank you. Um, so as you can see from the slide behind me, um, I head up uh, the FaceTime project, which is an industry funded initiative to help you achieve your exhibition objectives. I've only got 15 minutes, so what I'd like to do is to show you a couple of things that we do as a not-for-profit organization. And with that in mind, it'd be great to show you some research and insight we've done um, to give you some help and advice for the shows in June um, and to impart some top tips. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we're a not-for-profit organisation, so I'm not trying to sell you anything. We're funded by uh, key organisers uh, in the industry, such as UBM Live today. Um, our research projects have shown the exhibition industry to be a giant. Um, last year, exhibitions uh, accounted for £11 billion, and uh, it makes it the seventh biggest sector driving value and commerce. <coughs> And today, I'd like to show you how you can drive some success and value for your companies by improving your performance in June, delivering ROI, and most importantly, um, making your activity simpler, better, faster, cleaner, and with effortless ease. So I'd just like to show you some research that we've done, and hopefully this works. Who here is looking to um, persuade existing sales leads or convert existing sales leads? Okay, so that's quite a few less. If you're not looking at persuading or converting existing sales leads, uh, it's something you need to rethink. Um, 
Later today, Simon, uh, Simon Nowdy is going to be talking about the, um, uh, he's an expert in the subtle art of uh, persuasion. Uh, so I'll leave him to uh, describe the, uh, the benefits of, uh, of the live environment and face-to-face -face in terms of exhibiting. Um, but the important part of it is to understand that exhibiting is about relationships, it's about emotional connection, it's about engagement, and, and this all fosters an environment to persuade and convert. Okay, so eye tracking, eye tracking is another pretty cool uh, research project that we did last year. Um, and what it involved uh, was putting some high-spec glasses uh, onto visitors to uh, understand uh, what got their attention, what they liked, what they didn't like, but also to understand what got their attention. So we looked at the uh, movement of the iris. Um, we analysed more than 100 hours of visitors' experience at exhibitions. Um, and we handed it across to the behavioural scientists and we distilled the findings so that you guys know what you should be doing and you shouldn't. So here we go. I'm going to press play <laughs> and uh, talk over the footage. Here we go. Right, okay. So I'm just going to talk over the footage and this video is a great example what you should be doing at an exhibition. It's got great stand design uh, and it's got great engagement with the, with the uh, stand uh, staff. So I'll just let it sink in, but look how quickly uh, the attention is gained uh, both before and after anything that he focuses on. And if you notice on the stand design, the samples are right at the front, so it encourages people to engage with the product. And remember, exhibitions, we, you know, we're a sensory um, environment. So there's five senses. So when you're looking at doing your stand design, think how many of the senses that you guys are actually deploying, because it's the only platform that can employ all five senses. So they've got plenty of samples here. And then later on, there's gonna be a, um, all of the, um, links here on the uh, on the slide but later on a uh, stand staff comes up and she was brilliant in terms of how you engage Can I request a um, she was really knowledgeable about the product she answered the uh, the questions immediately and she knew the company she got data which is something that Ruth mentioned about with uh, N200 um, but she was friendly and genuinely friendly and that's something that I can't emphasize enough um, you know, a lot of people will be employing or using their, uh, their sales staff uh, on their stand and sometimes they're not the best person. Sometimes it could be the people that are actually designing the product, the people that are delivering the product for your company because they've got that passion. Uh, this research also shows a paradox of choice theory. The more attention, uh, the more information you give out, the less attention you'll receive. You know, you've got literally uh, milliseconds to grab somebody's attention, so just don't bore them. And the, and the plasma screen in the background, that is a really uh, strong uh, mechanism to get people's attention. But don't, um, don't just put on sort of like a two or three minute corporate video. Remember, what you've got to do is visualize the visitor walking down the aisle. So a five second, 10 second piece of content that gets your messaging across. And use all the floors, use all the space as well. The floor, as you see from his um, from his iris movements, he looks up, down, on the walls, everywhere. So utilise every little single bit of space that you can get. Um, as with all our research, we've done summary findings, and I've got brought a whole load of these sort of desktop guides. Um, we've got nine top tips from this research that you guys should most definitely be looking to employ uh, for the shows in June. Um, so and compare these top tips against your stand design and with what you're planning. Okay, I'm just going to pause that off there now. Uh, we also provide help and advice to you guys um, as exhibitors. Um, and it's backed up by the research that we do and the access to the face-to-face -face, uh, experts uh, that we employ. Uh, we have a whole load of free guides and you can get it at the link at the top of this slide here, so forward slash help, uh, and you can download them and access them from our website, so I do encourage you to do that. But I'll run through a couple of them quickly here. Have we got any first-time exhibitors in there? Okay, we've got one, two, yeah, we've got quite a few. You guys basically need to go to forward slash virgin 
where we've got a great sort of PDF guide which will just sort of like hold your hand through the whole process and it will just tick all the basic sort of stuff. The more experienced people in the room, you go to how to. And again, that's just a really great little checklist just to make sure that you're doing everything right and you haven't missed anything off. Um, and they're all built and designed and written to maximize your ROI. Um, we also got DVDs and e-learning. Um, the e-learning uh, resource is really good and it's a project management thing that should get you through the, um, through the whole process of exhibiting. We do sell them at heavily subsidised at £25 and £50, but I've nicked a whole load from the office today. And so first come, first serve. If, if you come up to me and uh, grab me, I'll be handing them out for free uh, later on today. Ruth mentioned it earlier in her presentation about social media. The explosion of social media is well documented and we've proved that it works hand in hand with any exhibiting experience that you, that you guys are doing. Uh, we've got a guide about the activity uh, that you should be doing before, during and after, and then obviously you tailor it specifically for the, the series that is running in June. Um, it's absolutely packed with statistics and advice, so I do recommend you check that out one as well. Top tips, this is the last part of the presentation. Um, and again, the links are at the top. Um, we asked a bunch of industry experts, it included you know, the guys from UBM, people from Reed, and uh, we asked them to uh, give us their top tips and we collated them and we managed to nail the top 10. Um, and they're documented on that PDF there. Uh, but we've also done one specifically for this year because there's a whole load of stuff that's coming down the line um, that needs to be updated and exhibitions are, are the forefront of progress. So things like making sure your activity's omni-channel, which is basically the visitor is experiencing the same type of, type of uh, connection with your companies and your brands at the, at the exhibition as they do on any other channel. Um, and things like wearable technology and the internet of things, that kind of stuff that you need to incorporate into your activity. Uh, but I thought it'd, give you, it'd be a good idea just to give me my personal top tips for, for the shows in June. So the first is be the visitor. Sometimes I think as exhibitors, you know, we can get too concerned about what we're trying to achieve from the show. You don't think about how you're being perceived. Um, you need to understand the environment that the visitor is experiencing. So take yourself out of your normal thinking pattern, visualize your stand, visualize your, uh, your messaging and your activity as a visitor and see whether that ticks the list. I mentioned it earlier, use all your staff, not just your sales staff. Some of your most passionate advocates of your company will be the guys that design it, design the products or service or deliver the products and services. So get them on the stand because they're gonna be able to talk in such a way um, that's going to be really appealing to all the visitors. Amplify. Um, Simon mentioned it in Fleet 21 that it's a component. The, the, the actual three-day event that you're doing is a component of, uh, of a marketing campaign. So you need to do three, as a minimum, three months before, three months after, um, and you need to build your pre and post show communications. Um, so think email campaigns, digital platforms, social media, meetings, product launches, hosting, and don't forget about the existing sales leads that you've got and persuasion and conversion. Clear messaging, this links back to the eye tracking, uh, and this is just in the behavioral sense, as you saw, you've got literally seconds to get your message across. If you can't um, define your activity within a sentence, you need to have a look at, uh, at at the activity that you're doing and look at your communications again. So can you define your activity in a sentence? And then push the organizer. This is, uh, I'm getting dirty looks from the, from the front of the room here. Um, you've paid your money and you've paid the biggest investment. Uh, UBM are currently, um, you know, they're a company at the top of their game and they're renowned in the industry uh, for service. Um, so contact them, see what you can get for extra. Ruth outlined a whole load of things that you can get for free. And there might be some stuff that, you know, that you might have to pay a little bit more money, but in, in comparison to what you'd be able to get from it versus the initial outlay, I think that you'll find you'll probably get quite good ROI on it. And if you don't ask, you don't get. Okay, so that's just my brief presentation. If you've got any questions, I'll be hanging around for a couple of hours after this. 
I'll be handing out the desktop guides and as I said, we've got the free uh, DVD of the e-learning resources. So thanks very much. Thank you.